but for everyone else, it's just a basic information for everyone else. So it'll be a reminder. Uh, it's made up of two parts. First is the name of your website. For mine, it was rosalparknews.org. So it would be whatever you would want it to be. Um, the name of your website, the name of your town, news, times, post, whatever. And the second point is the hosting. In other words, that's a company that will put your website on the internet for everyone to see. And these are the two major components that are needed. Um, so part one is the registering of a domain name. And I'll go through that real quickly. Um, and now there are some companies when you call them um, or you contact them, they say they can register your name for you. If they do, or if you want to do that, we'll talk about it in part two. But I'm going to go through it for someone who just wants to, isn't ready to start a website but wants to get a hold of a name. So you'll need to purchase the website name, and that's your domain name. And it's on an annual basis through a registrar. A registrar is a company that takes your name, um, basically licenses it on the internet, and then everyone can go to it. And it's either .com or .org, and whatever the name of your website is. Uh, I would recommend that you pick a short name. Long names are hard to remember. There's greater problems for misspellings. Um, or, you know, if it's not a short name, at least basic words. And the second one is to choose .org as your extension. And the reason for that is because .coms are usually reserved for businesses, and orgs are for nonprofits. And although there's really no hard line law that says you need to do uh, .org over .com, it'll kind of establish you as a citizen journalist, someone who's doing it, an organ, you know, um, not for profit, but for providing information. But if you choose to use .com, you can go right ahead and do that if it's available. Um, the cost of registering a website name through a register can range from about $10 a year all the way up to $35 a year. And um, here are some companies you can use. I've used all of these, um, so that's why I'm posting them. Uh, Domain.com, DomainNameSystems.com, and NetSoul, which is Network Solutions. And as far as I'm concerned, there really is no real advantage to going with someone who charges $35, because all you're doing is just licensing your name on the internet. So once that's done, you've, you've paid your, your fee for the year, and you, you have your website name. The second step is putting that name to use and making it live on the internet, and that's the hosting part. Um, and like it states here, it's the space on the internet that allows everyone to visit the website. Now the cost for hosting a website can range anywhere from $30 a year to $60 a year, all the way up to the thousands. And just for the purpose of people who are just doing it and starting off, the low end is is more than sufficient. There's there's nothing um, that a thousand dollar a year website will benefit for someone who's just starting out and just wanting to provide information to their neighbors or their town. And these are some companies that I use as well for hosting. Um, if you find others or hear of others. That's fine as well. Um, and if anyone has questions about the differences in these, I can provide you for them. But these are the five major ones I use, and I use them for different reasons. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, in motion hosting, which is the second one, I use for most of my websites. Um, it has a lot of space. It does a lot of the things for you, like set up your WordPress site. Uh, it's inexpensive. It allows for multiple domains. Um, and the same thing with Jaguar PC. The last one, web, uh, WPEngine.com, is one that I actually uh, just moved RoselleParkNews.org to. And the reason I did that was I got, I started out very small, and I got so many hits every day that the website was slowing down to a crawl. And this last company uh, specifically is made for WordPress sites. It's a bit costly. It's about $30 a month which comes out to about $360 a year, as opposed to someone like Average Data, which is $30 a year, or in motion, which is about $100 a year. But I needed to do that because it was, my website was so slow because so many people were visiting it. Uh, and like I said, 
you can choose any of those or any web hosting company that you want, but you should pick one that installs WordPress for you. And the reason for that is, say, Avid Data, which is one of the least expensive, thirty dollars. They do not install WordPress for you, and you would have to go to WordPress and set up the uh, do the entire setup, and it would be easier for companies that do it for you. Um, and then once you do these steps, uh, you can create your WordPress page and your site. Uh, when you go through the motions of using a web hosting company and there'll be a web WordPress button, you go ahead and you click it and they'll tell you provide a username and a password and you'll need to remember these because you'll need this to get into your website. If you forget these, no one else will know them um, and you will have to either start from scratch or, or find a way to, to uh, get logged onto your account. At this point, are there any questions or anything I was unsure about or unclear with? Okay. Yeah, I don't, see any I don't see any questions, Saul. So. Okay. So uh, for those who have internet browsers, uh, if you want to open them up while I'm discussing it, maybe share this screen with that screen because I've created a test site so people who are unfamiliar with WordPress can have hands-on um, use of it for this training session. And the website that you're going to go to is wrpkradio.org backslash wp-admin. And it'll ask you for a user and it'll look like this screen here when you pop up, asking for a username and a password. So the website is wrpkradio.org backslash wp-admin, and the user would be citizen with a capital C, and the password would be campaign, all lowercase. I'll load this up for a couple of seconds so people can log in if they want to and follow along as I continue with the program. Uh, while we're waiting, the reason I like WordPress is because it allows you, the, you the, the creator and the administrator, to make so many changes and to do so much that previously could not be done as quickly or inexpensively. I used to know HTML code, which is the basic code for all websites, and I use them for years. Uh, I've been doing websites since about 1995, 96, and about in 2007, I started using WordPress. And as of this date, I use, I have no websites that do not have WordPress. Um, so that's just, if I were to make the website that I have now without WordPress, I wouldn't be able to. It would be so hard to change everything, but WordPress does a lot of the work for you. So I'm just going to move ahead now. And for those who are following along with and are logged in, the website should look like this, the back end. Um, and you have what are called your menus, which are on the left, your menu options. And these are the details of whatever you choose. Uh, there's dashboard, which is basically the home page or the, of the back end. And then all these others, and I'm going to go through them. So like I stated, the dashboard has various items, and these are the, uh, all of them. We're going to go through the important ones, which would be post, media, pages, appearance, and plugins, and users. The other two are usually done with setup, and they're not changed until later on. Uh, so posts, this is the crux of a website for everyone. This is the articles, these are the entries, these are the blog entries that you'll post for people to, to see. And um, posts are, are the most dynamic because they always you add them and then they change. Pages would be different sections of your website. So if you go to a website and it has like home, about, um, you know, contact, those are what are considered pages. But when you go to home and you see something on the first page, whatever's there would be considered a post. 
and within those posts there's categories so if you create something an article about something you want to discuss in your town there was a meeting of the municipal of the municipality and they discussed um, you know a new law and, and you post it well on the um, and I'll go back here to when you create a post you'll put the entry and it'll be a little box with a title and you put the title of whatever you want to call it and you just put your entry like you would with uh, a Facebook or, or any kind of uh, social media and then there would be a category and the categories are what's important when you begin to develop a full-blown site um, and you could have different you could create categories like reports meetings articles documents etc and the reason for these things are because when you begin to develop um, over a hundred posts it, it'd be good to start separating them so not everything falls under one category so if you have municipal meetings that would be one thing if you have documents you've been given you could create them under that and it, they would be easily categorized for you and easily searchable for you as well as the user um, And then, we'll, and then there are pages. Pages are the ones that control the sections that you want people to visit. So there's an about page, a contact page, an archive page. Um, and this is what people see on the top of, of websites or on the left side of websites. And then we'll go with, there's the media. And whenever you have a post, you can create uh, an entry and if you have a picture or anything that you would like to add to that you can include them with the media button and for those who are following along with the live uh, test area you'll see that there's a, a media add media button right on top of your post and you click that and you can add pictures from your computer or from a website you've seen and add them into your post and they will be there um, and this section here the plugins this is kind of the the most uh, daunting part of, of WordPress uh, because when people see this they're like you know how does it work where do you put it what does it do but anything you think you would want to do with a website uh, you can do with plugins um, and I'll talk about that a, a little more if people have questions about that but um, like if you wanted to have a calendar, you could use a plugin and you would search in for a plugin that has a calendar. And, and this, this area is the one where if you're really interested in creating a website, it's the one that will give you the most possibilities, but you could probably spend an entire day searching through plugins because there, there are just so many and so many different ones. And um, they're great features for a website. Um, and the second most important thing, even though some people consider this the most important, would be the themes. This is the style of what it looks like. So when you go to a web page, it looks a certain way. Um, different pages look a certain way. Those are because they have different themes. Um, there are themes that you can pay for, and there are themes that are free. If anyone has questions on how to get themes that you can pay for, uh, you can either, you know, I'll provide Renee with contact information, and you can reach out to me, and I can help you side on um, what websites are good and what websites are bad because some websites um, they will sell you a template and you think oh this looks beautiful and you want your website to look like that but in order for it to look like that um, you'll have to do a lot of work and I myself when I first started I paid I think close to a hundred dollars for one template that I thought would look just the way I saw it on their website and they gave me with all these instructions and it was just so uh, tedious that it really wasn't worth it and the website that I ended up with uh, only cost me $20 and I made no changes to it um, and um, at the end I'll, I'll show you a photo but the website looks just like the New York Times and you can make websites to look like I guess they're called uh, professional websites where it won't look like a blog um, and that's where these themes come into play um, And the other important thing are the users. These are the people who control what you can 
put onto your website where you can post. Like for you, you're the user uh, citizen. I'm the user, um, the administrator. If you're going to have a collaborative effort with other people, you can create users for them and give them different levels. Uh, if you're, it's just going to be you for your now, you can just create one user. It'll default to the admin, and then you can use that to post. So, and, yes. I, I have a question um, that might be useful now. Um, sure. I, I don't realize what this is related to. But it says, how do you create categories? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my screen off for a second so I can open up a, a real screen. So I'm just gonna pause that for a second so I can prepare the uh, that website. Can everyone see this? Yes. Renee, can you see yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a live. So there's a post. And I want to create a new post. So I say, uh, like in my town, there's a uh, cat feeding license uh, ordinance that's being introduced. So I can put that in cat feeding ordinance introduced. And then I. Uh, you know, type in at last night's uh, meeting, blah, blah, blah. And then what I do is, um, I'm sorry here, I'm going to have to minimize this. Okay. There's categories here. And if I want to add a new category and I want to call this um, government or municipality or meetings, so let's call it meetings. On the right hand side, I just add a new category and I add it. And that's it. It automatically checks off whatever this category was or whatever I just posted. So right now, this post is associated with the category of meetings. I can add different ones. I can reuse the same ones. I can reuse multiple ones. It's all up to the user. Um, did that answer the question? I assume so. I don't see anything else at this time. Okay. Um, so let me go back to this. All right. So, like I said, this is what my blog looks like, for lack of a better term. Uh, it looks just like a regular website. It acts like a regular website. Uh, most people wouldn't even know that this is a WordPress site. Um, and there's different designs. So it's self parking. So this is what the website looks like. And this is this is all done in WordPress. And the good thing with this is that I have my categories I've called sections. So these are the different sections of the uh, different categories that I've created. And they all just go to the, um, they automatically go. So if someone wanted to find something about schools, they could click on that. And then all articles I've written about the schools would be posted. And as you see, they all have like little pictures, but school closed, like this week or last week when the school was closed, different articles. Um, so that's about it for the, for the basics. Uh, I'll now go ahead and start talking about the um, details of any area that anybody wants me to talk about. Um, if not, I'll go to plugins because that is uh, awesome. But it's also very uh, cumbersome uh, when you first get used to them. So if anyone has questions at this point, I'd be willing to entertain them. And if not, I'll just go ahead and talk about plugins. 
Yeah, no questions yet, Saul. Okay. So with plugins, um, um, these are also while I'm here, so let's stay on this page. So while I'm, if I have an article that I want to post and I don't want to publish it yet, I can just save it. And it'll actually save the draft. And if I want to preview it, in other words, I just want to see what it's going to look like before it goes out, I can also do that too. So cat feeding ordinance gives the time, who wrote it, and it allows people to leave a comment. And then this is the actual um, article. So anything you type in here, so if you type in uh, Ordinance 2398 was introduced for first reading, and whenever you save your draft, you can go back and preview it again. And any changes you make are immediate. Um, you can even do that when you publish. But right now, no one can see it except the author of this uh, post. Um, and then once that happens, it becomes live, and then people will be able to see it. If for some reason you accidentally published it, so suppose you it published by accident, you can go back, and then you can change its status from published back to draft, and then OK. Um, and then you update it. And it's back to its draft status. So that's the great thing also with WordPress. There's no kind of button that will destroy everything, or there's nothing here that will uh, destroy your site. Um, so we'll go now to plugins. Right now, since this is a very basic website, I have just these three plugins. Uh, for limited login attempts, so if people try to hack in, they won't be able to. And this is a test drive, so I can see different themes that people want. And this is just a basic one that always comes with uh, WordPress. Uh, again, with plugins, you can add new. Everything on top will be add new. So if you go to um, pages, there's always an add new button for everything, media, uh, appearance, and like I said with appearance, these are the different templates that the page looks like. So right now, I'm using, um, I believe I'm using 2014. So if I wanted to go ahead and use 2011, the website changes its appearance. I'm sorry, hold on. Website has changed its appearance, and um, that's that's what themes basically do. And you can go here and you can add new, and you can search for different styles that you wish, and whatever you put in here, it will come back with and give you that uh, the choices available. So if you like say tan, and you want to have uh, a two column, and you don't want anything to change. And then when you search, it'll only come back with those themes that you asked for. So uh, and then you can pick any of these and install them. And it's as easy as installing. So if you want to install this, um, and then you can preview it. And it'll show you kind of like what the, uh, oh, that thing was broken. <laughs> My apologies. So again, th this is a good thing with WordPress that a lot of these things you can do before putting them on the internet so there's no kind of errors or, or missteps or uh, kind of huge uh, problems that are that other kind of web design to give to you. Um, Hi, Saul. Um, yes. I know you're probably going to jump back to plugins, but um, there's a question before you do. Um, okay. Can you speak to embedding GIS maps into WordPress? Yes. Uh, that's where plugins would come in. So someone wants to embed GIS or uh, the mapping, which was uh, discussed at a certain, 
basically what you could do is type in here and you do you search your plugins. Uh, or you can do mapping. I guess mapping. Web maps. And then you can actually go in and ask for details. And it'll tell you what each of these things do. Um, so the mappings that I guess were discussed in uh, a previous seminar would be available through here. And, and as you can see, there's a pro version, which is the one that you have to pay for. And then there's just the basic um, version that doesn't have as many bells and whistles. But the people who made this are JS consultants. And all you got to do is just install it now. Uh, you can activate the plugin. And then usually what happens is somewhere here are the settings. And it'll tell you your settings and so this is for a pro version, but if we go back to plugins and we go to add, we type in again GIS mapping. And having as if you wanted to pick all these different websites, I mean these uh, plugins, you could. It's not going to create any issue with your how your website appears. So we install that. And you can always activate it. Activating a plugin does nothing more than make it active on the back end. It doesn't see, as you can see, nothing has changed on here. So, um, so if you install, uh, so let's go to um, once you install the GIS. Most of these mappings are going to have widgets, and widgets are another aspect of um, a WordPress site and it looks like these don't have widgets so what's going to happen is with this one so I'll just pick the geo yeah <laughs> these get kind of here's where it gets complicated because you'd have to do all these things but a good way to go about differently is to find out there are themes that are based on geo mapping, and they'll have maps already based for you. Uh, and I could give you one right now. Um, it would be uh, parkonline.com. No, no, it's not on yet. Yeah, these kind of things, like, you, you'd have to basically go through them and, and figure them out, and you're going to have to pay for a lot of them to be accessible to details that you wish. Um, but that, even for me, I, I am, that's the next step I want to do. But I haven't even started that yet because I just need to, to 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 bring that up so every week I could have like a different mapping for voter registration or um, different areas of interest for the readers. Um, that that's a bit a big of a task. Um, so uh, for those who don't are novices, I wouldn't recommend going to that. Although it's a great um, Goal to aspire to. Uh, that requires a. That's where these plugins that we were talking about get into to play. Um, you can also have Google Mapping, which is kind of like that. And if your GIS, um, whatever protocol you're using, oops, I should spell it right. So Google Maps, and you can go in here and you can install. And then there's always, uh, most of the time, there's they have like screenshots of what things would look like. 
So if you want something to look like this, then you would pick this um, plugin. And every plugin will tell you a description, an installation, and your change log, and usually a screenshot or a frequently asked questions. But the two that are important are the description and the installation. And the installation is just as simple as to download it, upload it to your directory, act, activate, and enjoy. So if we install it, we activate it. Now here is now a new menu came up, and it's Google Ready Google Maps. And a lot of these, they have tutorials. So you can start by following the tutorials and, and um, step-by-step instructions on how to set things up. Uh, but that, again, that's, that's where plugins play a huge part in a lot of things that people want to do. So like for this one, this one has a uh, map, and you go and you follow your tutorial. And then you can add a new map. So if you want a map of, say, um, New Jersey, and you call it New Jersey, here's where you go ahead and you put your information. And you can go ahead and move in, zoom in. But this is getting into like a kind of a higher end for the plugins, which could have a class all its own. But um, that's how you would begin to add. Any, anything you want to add would most likely be through a plugin. Um, did that kind of answer the question that someone wanted? I believe so. No comment <laughs> at okay. this time. All right. So um, other plugins that are, are really good are um, like if people want to find out about here's here's a really good one that's that's always useful is how to integrate WordPress sites with Facebook sites uh, or with your Facebook page, which is the easiest way and the most economical way for you to get readers on a consistent basis by creating a Facebook page based on whatever um, domain name you started, and then integrating it. So every time you post something, it automatically goes to your Facebook page. Um, and uh, I'll give you another example here. And this is, this is my uh, newspaper's website. And here I have my posts. And then I will open up my Rosal Park News Facebook page. And everything I post here automatically gets posted here. I don't need to do double work. And as you see, I've got about 410 likes. I just started this not too long ago. So um, this is another great way to promote the website and for it to do a lot of work for you. And that's where WordPress comes in with a plugin. I actually downloaded a plugin that replicates everything, every post I make onto Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, um, the different social medias that are out there. As you can see, I'm working on an article right now and I haven't finished it, but um, it's a draft. So I, it's not public yet, but I can still see it. So if I wanted to, uh, I'll, I'll give a perfect uh, example here. So people can see the process of how uh, a post is written and created and put on the internet. So this one started out with a community preschool in town that was doing registration. And I sat with the um, director and had a little interview. And, you know, we, we talked. And I just, this is the article, so these are the words. Um, it's not that difficult to use. 
Uh, I wanted a link to their website, so I used my menu bar on top to put it. But here's where the Add Media came in. So I wanted to add media, and I either can upload a file by selecting it from my computer, or if I have them here already, I can put them in. And I chose this one. And WordPress did all the work for me and knew that I wanted that picture to be the headline picture here. So that's what it was. And then there is my article as the name when it was published, gives information. And actually, at the end, I put a plug-in called the gallery or the pictures I took. I was able to um, put pictures into a little gallery. And when people come in, they clicked. And they got to see each picture one by one. It took me for the interview um, about 45 minutes. It took me about 15 minutes to do this because it was really, it, it's really that simple. It's typing what you do, hitting publish, and then I added a category of headlines because I wanted it to be in the headline post. And here's another reason categories are, are important because if your template allows for different um, locations of, of categories, you can tell it that I want, uh, if anything I put in a headline, I want it to be in the center of the page. I want it to be um, a showcased site. And like right now, anything that's here that has headline comes up as a picture. Um, so there it is, and and um, there's there's a lot of different. All these are plugins. All these things that I have on the side here, these are all plugins. These are when I want a post to move from a headline to a regular uh, site. Um, Google News, if I wanted to be included through Google News, if I had a article where there was uh, an audio that I wanted people to hear, these are all done through plugins. Again, I, I don't use those these much, so I don't want to overwhelm people with, it looks like a lot of work. It really isn't. It was just basically me writing it down, me putting it in, me hitting publish, and then it just became part of the site because the themes and the plugins were all in place. I didn't need to rearrange this. If I were to do this without WordPress, I would have to go into here and move all these things on their own. And WordPress um, is, is great enough that it does all the work for me. Um, so again, like I said, this is, this is one site. Um, I have others, um, and I'll give you an example here is another WordPress site for uh, an organization in town that I'm part of that's an activist part from which we contact the citizens campaign. This is a, another WordPress site and most people don't realize that this is a WordPress site. Um, what we do is we have videos so we um, videotape all the meetings and we put them online for the town. Um, and again, with this end, this was a plugin to to connect the the video from uh, a video hosting company or a video sharing company onto this site. And here's where the categories again come in order. I this is this is categorized as a library board meeting. So if you want to go back and check all the library board meetings, they can. If they want to go through the municipal meetings, they can. If they want to go through the budget workshops, they can, et cetera, et cetera. So. That's where categories are important, and that's where they come in. Um, again, all these are, this is a WordPress site. Most people wouldn't realize this is a WordPress site. It has uh, information about us, who we are, uh, contact. And again, this was all done on the back end. And doing these things take at the most maybe 10 minutes to do. Uh, but that's the really good thing about WordPress, that once you get into this, see like right now I just realized I made a mistake, I didn't capitalize the Methodist, so I can then update it and it changes on my, uh, on the front end, which is what people will see. Uh, so are there any other questions at this point? Yeah, we actually have a follow-up question to the maps discussion. Have okay. you ever installed an app that allows users to interact with an underlying database? 
say users answer X number of questions and then press enter, which fires a routine that retrieves data from a database for a user. Um, is, it, is it like a survey type of, um, is it a survey? Yeah, that's what it sounds oh. like. Okay, I mean, if it is, yes, I have. Um, and I actually do those from time to time here. And again, those are through plugins. So if I wanted a plugin and I wanted to search a plugin and surveys, um, just another survey tool. I mean, it, it's, and you could sit here, and I, I do sometimes just go through all these from top to bottom, like here. So feedback and survey manager, if you want people to um, find out about something that you would want them to know, like, you know, what do you think about the town doing this or, or that, you can download these things um, and go through them. And yes, I have. Um, the, some of them are easy to use. Some of them are very difficult. But for most where you want to compile a bunch of surveys, um, and, and present them to someone or publish them, there are plugins that do that, yes. If that was your question about surveys and with databases, if you meant something else, maybe you could explain what kind of database you were talking about, and I can be able to help you with that. didn't get any feedback yet on that question, so I assume that's the uh, you know, answer. Um, right. The next question is, is RSS feed a plugin? RSS feed is a default, and that's actually a good question. It's under your settings. Um, and it's under, uh, I believe, your reading. No, it's under your discussion. Uh, where is my RSS? Because I've, I've used RSS for those who aren't familiar with it, that is, um, if you want people to subscribe to your to your blog and and then um, just be notified every time there's a new post, um, it pushes it out. Um, where is it on this one? Oh wait, I'm sorry. It, it, it's a default here. I'm sorry, that one doesn't have it because I, I didn't put it in. But it's a default. But there are also other, uh, there are plugins that uh, facilitate feeds to to the public. Um, and the one I use is, um, it's just called RSS feed, and I'll show you where it is here. It's, um, well, that's the feed fix. But if you wanted to look for it, again, you go to the plugins. You can just type in add new, RSS. And the good thing with this is you'll see ratings. And these ratings are from actual users. So, uh, and you can read what they've, what they've written. So if you go into your details and you scroll down, uh, where are the reviews? You would have to, um, well, see, one person did this. But you can have it where there's different um, RSS. There's Super RSS Reader, which is the one I use most of the time. Um, and that one, what it does is it allows you to kind of have control over how you want your RS, your feed to go out. But your feeds with WordPress are always a default. And what I'll show you is this is what a feed is. So every time someone gets a uh, um, through bookmarks or through an email, this is what they'll get. And that's what RSS feeds are. And um, something like Super RSS feed will say, you know, you will just always keep pushing out the top three or only a certain category, so you don't want people to be inundated with every single post, or they just want to be updated when a post in a certain category is made. That's where the plugins come in. But yes, plugins help enhance RSS feeds, but feeds are always part of the WordPress design. They're embedded in it.
So I hope that okay, answered I, that question. Yeah, I got some feedback on the previous question. So the okay. question was thinking less of a survey and more in terms of retrieving data from many large public data sets, like property data sets, for example. Um, is there a plugin for that? There probably is, but something like that would either be, well, let me rephrase that. A plugin can be made for anything, absolutely anything. But something that detailed would most likely be a paid plugin and most likely be something that would be customized. And there are companies that will do that. They will create a plugin for you based on what you need. Um, is there something off the shelf that will take a bunch of data from, say, um, state records or, or state databases? Probably not. Uh, unless they can get downloaded as a CSV file. Um, and and you would basically need to download that information. But for example, um, here's your ultimate CSV importer. So if you got data sets from say the Board of Education and they have um, data on school enrollment, performance testing, et cetera, you could go to the Department of Education website and download that information as a CSV file, which is comma separated value. It's basically the the bare bones of Excel. It's it's all the data. And then you would put it in and you would get this plugin. So go ahead, go ahead and import them and always import them as and update them as long as you got that new data set to be put into the website. Is there anything that automatically does that? I don't believe so. Um, but again, going to a Department of Education website and downloading that information would just be as quick as you know going to the website and clicking download. Um, I hope I answered that question. And yeah, the, go the person the said, direction. okay, okay, I have the data set, so what I need to do is contract with someone to write an app to plug it into WordPress site. Would that be correct? No, if you have, if this person has the data set, they have, again, using the example that I had of the, the um, Department of Education numbers. You could go in and as long as you have that data set under whatever format you have it, if you have it at CSV, XLS, there are going to be plugins that you can put them into and then it would be up to you, the back end user, to go ahead and um, and here, like here's the instructions on how to do it. And there you go, like you could create map fields and say, I want this to be this, I want that to be that, and you can create something as intric intricate as a bar graph or a pie chart or a, a, you know, a line chart. There are stuff like that, but I would go with looking for them first and then going on Google and typing in a plug-in, CSV, uh, or whatever extension is, import, and then going through that. Um, it could be, you know, if it's not that intricate, and it just has basically different values you want to pull from, it would be this. If you have data set that you want to pull and make more like a database, yeah, you would have to get a, a WordPress database company. And they're pretty expensive. Um, so I hope that answered that. Great. Um, I don't see any questions right now. Okay, I think that answered it. <laughs> um, any more questions right now? Did you have anything else that you were in the middle of showing before that we want to get back um, to for a minute? Or Well, I, I just wanted to open it up to, to ask people, um, you know, if for those who haven't had anything, how daunting of a task is this they feel? Um, you know, you know, oh, this is too much or, um, you know, do you want to know how much time you need to develop? Because to if you have zero um, in experience, it will take you about maybe a month, a couple of weeks for you to set everything up and go in. But once you do that, and that's your learning curve, it'll be as easy as posting it. There's nothing, you know, the, the learning curve is always at the, at the beginning. But once it's that, it's pretty easy after then. Um, I hope I didn't give people enough so much information that people are like, I'm lost. But if they are lost, please let me know and I will try to make you less lost or feel less lost. Great. And we are recording this webinar so people can go back online and, and go through it again if there were steps that were um, a little bit more complicated that they want to take a look at again. 
Right. Um, okay, another question. How many people work on news sites typically? Uh, for me, uh, the, this website is just me, basically. You'll see my name on every single post for the most part. I have some people who are starting to, to come in, uh, but I post maybe at least um, five times a week. Uh, but it's usually after I go to a meeting, I just type something in. Um, another good way to get traffic is to call your local police department and ask them to provide you with their blotters. Uh, for some macabre reason, I found that people really look at those a lot. Oh, and, and I'm sorry, here's a great thing with your dashboard. Again, this is all with a plug-in. You can track how many people go to your websites. And I have a site stat, and it tells you how many people have seen a certain post, and you can see, um, like yesterday, I had 607 different people view the site. Uh, not 607 um, hits, but 607 people actually viewing the site. And you can tailor, like, see, the, look at that. These are the first three, and they all had to do with police stops. But uh, a store opened up in town, and um, that was popular. And it gives you for the last past, I think, week, these are the top sites. Um, your dashboard is, is important to you. It's the first thing I always look for because it gives me the information that I need. Um, but most, you can, you can do it on your own. Um, if you're willing to, if you're the sort of person that goes to these meetings anyway, or really passionate about a certain subject in town, um, adding a website or a, a, a publication to that will not be that much more cumbersome. It'll just be another step to do. Right. From the same person, can you assess how well you are accomplishing your mission? I think it's great, including the Concerned Citizen site. Um, it's, <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you about, it started in 2010 in May. And I was writing, you know, articles, and um, I realized one article, a couple of articles I wrote. One article was about a um, company, a cell company that wanted to lease land in town. And I wrote the article about, as a matter of fact, I'll put that one in um, because it was. Here's one where I used video because I just happened to be. I was at the meeting and I, I taped it. And I wrote about the fact that they were going to do this, and a lot of the board members weren't asking a lot of good questions. And they, this was the first one, so it was postponed because a lot of questions that were asked. And that was on the 16th. And the meeting was postponed from July, August, and it was held in September. And in September, it comes in, and the meeting lasted so long. And then at the end, this is what um, was shown. And when the... Um, I'll move it forward, but when it was denied, people in the audience stood up and applauded. And this got a lot of hits. Um, and it showed people, it showed me how important the media was because people showed up to the meeting because of the first article and because of the calls that members from the um, from the music, from the planning board got, they were all going to vote. It was a majority vote to allow it to happen. But because of the article and the people who showed up, it was unanimous denial of the actual application. And team mobile went through the motions of threatening for a lawsuit, but actually nothing ever happened because an article was written about that too. Um, so I feel one good publication or a publication that's trusted and, and done well and not extravagant is worth going to 100 meetings and, and, and talking all the time. Um, it's important. People read. And, and during election time, I get phone calls from, from candidates and people who want to run. I actually have interviews that I, I do. Oh, so here it is. Um, this was the one you know, where people were like clapping and, and they were like, so happy that it got done. Um, so, yeah, and again, I, I've, it's gotten so well that I actually have a parody website that I've had friends start up um, to um, emulate the New York Post. And people are now basically like 
this is this is clearly all a joke, and it's funny how some people take this seriously as well. Um, but I think, and again, if it wasn't for the citizens' campaign, I would never have done any of this. I think the citizens' campaign were very were the reason that this newspaper started, because they gave me a lot of the, the information and were very helpful. And it's important because this is what gets the word out. This cost me about, it used to cost me under $100. It's, it's gone up, like I said. But for about three years, this was under $60. And I had thousands of people visiting the website. And I had them in different languages. Uh, people can do them in different languages. And what I found, it's not the people who are reading. It's that people don't know who's reading this. Um, you know, because it's 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 not a it's not a publication. It's it's online. People can go on, and people don't know who's reading this. So, government officials are are aware of that. So, I think we yes. have one more question from somebody who didn't want to use the question feature. So, I'll open up Brian's uh, phone line right now. Brian, okay. are you there? Hello, Brian. If you're muted, can you unmute yourself? <laughs> um, okay, maybe Brian's not available. Okay. Okay, um, so I think that that's um, all the questions for now. Um, would you be able to turn it back over to me, Saul, for sure. screen sharing? Okay. Absolutely, let me go ahead and turn my screen off. Did you change it over to me yet, or? Oh, what do I need to do? I you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I did it myself. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, mention some upcoming events for folks who are doing some blogging or reporting online uh, or just interested in this. Um, we have a, a series of classes going on, um, well, actually happy hours. We're starting in Trenton uh, for civic engagement. Uh, so the next one is Wednesday, February 26th at 5.30 at Trenton Social, um, which is a bar and restaurant there in Trenton. Um, and our next civically speaking meetup um, is next Thursday, February 27th at Haley's Harp and Pub in Metuchen, right on, uh, near the train station, so it's easy to get to. And then we have, um, as I started to mention earlier, a uh, class series um, and the Citizen Journals class at Shiloh Baptist Church in Trenton will be on Saturday, March 1st at 10 a.m. Also on Saturday, March 1st at 1 p.m., um, we have our next meeting of the Burlington County Matters Meetup Group. Um, so we should have a good group there as well. If you're in that area and want to join us and share your concerns in your community. Um, and then the last event is we're really excited about is Environmental Justice Advocacy and the Media, um, a conference we are co-hosting with Sustainable Jersey and with some really great experts from around the state on environmental justice issues and how to report on them and, and find information. And that'll be Monday, March 10th at Rutgers, New Brunswick. Um, so hopefully we'll hear from you or see you at one of these events. Um, and I want, just want to thank Saul um, for spending time with us this afternoon and sharing his knowledge. And thank all of you um, for joining us. And, and good luck with your websites. Renee, what time is the Civically Speaking on, on Haley's? Um, that is at 6 p.m. Oh, it's at 6 p.m. Yep. And if anyone has any questions, um, they can reach me via Facebook uh, under Roosevelt Park News, and I'd be more than happy to help if anyone has any further questions that they weren't able to think of or um, ask now. Great. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all.